On this day, the pups filled pails with water, a little food coloring, and liquid soap. They stirred the water with egg beaters until bright colored bubbles lifted and drifted into the air. There were giggles and shouts as they played. And when they were finished, they wondered what they would do with the rest of the day. It was going to be hot, so Smudge suggested the waiting pool. Billy grinned and said they could play a game with her new beach ball. That sounded just perfect. But just then, a rescue call came in. We were all needed out in the far corner of the park. All spicy alpaca was in trouble. Ophelia, Zeke, Petunia, Smithsonian, and Morgenstein met us when we arrived in the park. They were all very concerned. Allspice had been playing hide-and-seek with them, and she was caught in the bramble bushes. The thorns on the branches had snagged into her lovely, fluffy hair, and she was completely stuck. The pups wiggled into the brambles very carefully and had a look. They each tried, but none of them could pull even one of the brambles out of her hair. And poor Allspice, the tugging was starting to hurt a bit. Everyone stopped to think of a better way. Tanker looked at the brambles, and then he came up with an excellent idea. Maybe they could give Allspice a haircut and free her from the brambles that way. Everyone, even Allspice, thought that was a brilliant idea. Now, I have to tell you, even rescue pups don't play with scissors, so I asked Dilly to run and get Bertie the Barber to do the job. Well, he hurried over with his case full of hair-cutting things. As Bertie clipped, the pups collected the fur and put it in bags. Many snips and clips later, a very short-haired allspice wiggled out of the bramble. She thanked the pups, Bertie and me, and raced off with her friends to play. We dropped Bertie back at his barber shop on our way home to the fire station. Later that morning, the pups got out the wading pool and put it in the front yard. I filled it for them while Dilly ran inside and got her new beach ball. They all splashed around and giggled for a bit, and after that, they decided to play soccer with the beach ball. And it was a good game, too, except the tanker usually managed to get the ball. Smudge was fast and kicked it high up in the sky. Pharaoh shrieked and giggled and ran after it and got a bop in where she could. But Billy, being the slowest, never seemed to get a turn. Back and forth the ball went up and down and somebody always got there before Dilly. Dilly never got a turn. Once she almost kicked it, but Smudge ran up and kicked it first. And she was starting to get angry. It was her idea to play with the beach ball, which was hers after all. And she wasn't having any fun. Dilly told the others she wanted a turn, but the brightly colored beach ball kept on flying over her. The others all laughed and encouraged her, telling her to jump or to try and to get in there, but she never once touched her own new beach ball. And suddenly Dilly just shouted. She wanted to stop this silly game. It was no fun at all. And the others were surprised. They were all having a good time. Tanker said this was the way the game was played. And Smudge and Farrah agreed they had to follow the rules. Dilly just glared at her friends. She was really frustrated. Wearing the biggest frown I think I've ever seen, Dilly said it was her ball, and she was taking it back. She snatched the beach ball right out of Tanker's hands and then ran into the fire station. The others stood there very surprised. Up in her bedroom, Dilly was still angry, but surprised at what she'd done. It was true she hadn't been having a lot of fun with the beach ball game, but now sitting in her room all alone, she was having no fun at all. She hadn't solved her problem, she had just changed it for another one. And now she felt bad for being so mean to the others. Smudge, Tanker, and Farrah walked slowly into the kitchen and sat down. They were sad that Dilly was angry with them. 
They really did want to play with their friend and have fun. They didn't know what to do now. Well, I couldn't have four unhappy pups on such a lovely summer day, so I talked to Dilly. I explained that if she wasn't having fun with the game, she and the others could have changed it. Instead of stopping it altogether, taking her ball and going home ruined the fun for everyone, including Dilly. There had to be another game they could all play and enjoy. One where Dilly could have a turn. <laughs> Dilly smiled and hugged her beach ball. She had an idea. She thanked me, hopped off her bed, and dashed off to the kitchen. When she saw the three sad faces, she quickly apologized for spoiling everyone's fun. Smudge, Farrah, and Tanker all nodded, but I have to say, nobody smiled. Billy grinned and said, maybe a game of Bounce and Splash would be fun. Then they all smiled and ran out with Billy to the front yard. Tanker wanted to know how to play. Billy tossed him the ball and kept on running. She told them they had to run around the pool. The person with the ball had to throw it at the water, trying to splash the others on the hot, hot day. Everybody loved the idea, and again they were shrieking and laughing. Billy came over to tell me I had made a good suggestion and that all the pups were having a marvelous time together. And if you don't feel like playing a game because you're not very good at it, ask your friends if they'll change it a bit for you so you can have some fun too. Good friends always cooperate, and I know you will too. Here's some things that are fun to do. Fun for the friends who play with you. Fun for a bunch or just for two. Fun for me and fun for you. Like playing, what is it? Put some interesting small and soft things into a paper bag. Ask a friend to put their hand in and guess what's in there without peeking. You'll get some pretty funny answers. Then show them what each thing really is. 